vehicle that we are, we like to have that pad uh, in case anything goes wrong, which we don't foresee, but just in case anything does. The runway here at the uh, Kennedy Space Center was constructed especially for shuttle landings. Now it will have to wait to greet its first shuttle till later this year, probably when, Paul, in November? Right now we're planning on landing STS-5 back here at the Cape in November, Mort. And uh, out on the runway here was a large contingent of people. Uh, expectant, hoping that the shuttle would arrive here, but uh, this uh, disappointment is tempered with feelings of elation that at least the shuttle has safely returned to the Earth's atmosphere. Thank you, Paul, and let's throw it now back to Terry Drinkwater in New Mexico. Terry? Right now, here at White Sands, we've just had the word that the shuttle is at 112,000 feet and over New Mexico, having just passed from Arizona at Mach 5. Soon, Leo, the sonic boom at Mach 1, right? Well, they're going to make making a right-hand turn into runway 17, so they're going to be quite a ways to the north of, north of us, and I'm not sure whether we'll hear much of a boom here at our location. At uh, Mach 4.3, range 100. Chase Plains, which miles. of course will be the first to see the shuttle. Our camera is not long after that. Seven and not and long a half from minutes now. to touchdown. Seven and a half minutes until touchdown, Leo. They should be coming up on truth or consequences pretty soon. Well, there's that's truth a town, in not a quiz show. There's truth in New Mexico today. It didn't look like it yesterday, but uh, we're going to make it. Copy that. Passing. There are thousands of spectators here. Not as many as yesterday. Some didn't brave uh, the weather here, but. Uh, those who are here are going to get a good view. This is the scene from the chase planes. You'll remember from previous landings that at one point we'll get a good picture of the shuttle if all goes well from the chase plane itself. These are early pictures from the chase plane uh, from high above the area of the landing strip, uh, White Sands, New Mexico. Terry, right now the vehicle's in the terminal area energy management guidance. He'll be he taking a heading right for that uh, heading alignment circle and he'll make about a 90 degree right turn in the lineup with the runway. We hope our long range camera here can pick him up. We picked the, uh, the STA, the shuttle training airplane, up earlier this morning making this same approach, so we hope we can pick him up shortly. All eyes skyward here now, Leo. The first picture of Columbia. That's probably the Wismer long-range cameras on him. From the White Sands Mitchell. How fast is he going there, Leo, now? Well, he's going uh, probably about Mach 2 right now. Twice the speed of sound. And looking every bit like an airplane. Leo Krupp, as we watch that always thrilling sight of the shuttle returning home, has there been any indication that there were any further difficulties with the tiles during the re-entry? Uh, not to date, Dan. There will probably be a thorough re-inspection of the vehicle when it gets down. That'll be the first time we really know what the tile loss was. And I'm sure that this loss of tile will have an impact on the turnaround because there will have to be some repair and replacement of tile and also some look at our turnaround procedures for inspection of the tiles. Well, Leo, isn't it fair to say that the tiles uh, long range simply aren't going to work and that some other system will have to, be, uh, have to be adopted? Well, I can't say that, Dan. We improved them the last time by densifying them, and I think probably we'll have to do is densify some additional tiles, but uh, that's for the tile experts to say, not me. Okay, we got a sighting. We got him on our camera now. From here at White Sands on the ground. These pictures of the Space Shuttle Columbia returning are live from Northrop Strip, White Sands, Missile Range, New Mexico. The target. We're holding them with our naked eye, Dan. And I think our camera's on them now. Just below the cloud. 
Just a speck below the cloud there. Next event to look for, those of you at home, will be the lowering of the landing gear, which should uh, happen about 37 seconds before touchdown. Brian, once the uh, shuttle gets down into the into the heading alignment circle, we hope the chase planes will rendezvous, and then we should have some real close-up TV shots from the chase plane. Yesterday, the skies were white with blowing sand. That's a beautiful picture of the shuttle now on the TV screen. He's heading for that alignment circle to make a big sweeping 90 degree right turn to line up with the runway. And you may be able to hear a sonic boom as that happens. He'll be about 14 miles north of us and I'm with this wind condition, I doubt if we'll hear it, but we may if the wind slacks up a little bit. Okay, 30,000, he's just about tangent to the hack now, so he's starting his right turn around. Airspeed 285. Respecting the hack now, passing 26,000, looks good. Well, the reason they're doing a right turn in, Dan, because of the high winds aloft. Two and a half minutes to touch down. A left turn would have required a 270 degree range. turn, which would have been very difficult to perform. Turning right now into runway 17 at 20,000 feet. Airspeed 295. Leo, is the computer doing this? Uh, the computer is flying the airplane right now. He's on automatic, but as soon as he gets up near the heading alignment circle, right now he's he's making his right turn, so he's flying it manually. Club Houston wins 190. There There's was, the boom. Oh. We did hear it. There you go. Two booms, or one really long one, Leo. <laughs> Out of 15,000 feet. Now, Jack Lausman's flying this manually, and he'll... As soon as he gets around and lined up with the runway, he'll go back to auto. Okay, he's going auto right now, and the auto land is now flying the airplane. This is one of the critical tests of the shuttle flight. Now, Jack will let the auto land fly this down to 100 feet above the ground when he'll take over and make the manual landing. Out of 10,000 feet at 288. Okay, now that the speed brakes, you can see them split on the, on the uh, rudder there. The brakes are open. When you see those brakes come in, you'll know he's passing through 2,500 feet. Flaps and trail. Roger. There's a chase plane joined up on him. 5,000 feet. Airspeed 280. We have a beautiful eyeball sighting here of this whole approach. Range about three miles. Okay, the brakes are in now. He'll start his pre-flare and come onto the shallow glide slope, which is about a one and a half degree glide slope to the end of the runway. And as his speed gets... Roger. When his speed decays through 270 knots, you'll see the gear come down, and Thousand it should snap feet. down in about two or three seconds. Airspeed 292. Looking beautiful. Watch Still for the... Auto. There goes the gear. The gear. Here comes the gear. Gear down. 20. 10, 5, 4, touchdown. Beautiful landing. Thrusters. 10. Thrusters 5, 4, 3, 3. Oh, the nose came up again for some touchdown. reason or other. We got a little perturbation there in the nose uh, oscillation. He was letting the nose down for some reason. He must have hit it up. The nose came up. Incredibly beautiful. He made. He handled that beautifully. Cheers here from the thousands assembled to watch what really is a historic day. The mission elapsed time of touchdown is unofficially eight days, zero hours, four minutes, forty-nine seconds. So, so little dust and sand that came up there. I, I was astounded, Leo. Well, that was a, a beautiful landing. It looked like he may have landed slightly long because he had a lot of energy, but the one thing I noticed on touchdown is he started to let the nose over to derotate the nose. For some reason or other, the nose ballooned back up in the air again like maybe a gust caught him, but he recovered beautifully from that and got the nose back down on the deck again in good shape. And now rolling towards a stop. Magnificent view from here. The cameras, the press much closer. 
than we ever were before at White Sands, Dan, when you were out there. Okay, Columbia, welcome home. That was a beautiful job. Well, this certainly proves that the shuttle has some uh, adaptability to change in plans because we've had plenty of them on this flight. We certainly have, and now... After high wind delayed the scheduled landing yesterday, this time coming back home at White Sands, New Mexico. I wouldn't say the landing was picture perfect because there are a couple of questions about it, but any landing in which the astronauts walk safely away from is nearly picture perfect. Let's have another look at the landing and talk about what was different this time than the last time. 292. Still in auto. The shuttle is, as I say, a few seconds ahead of time, and the landing gear comes down just in the nick of time. Now watch the nose, as Leo Krupp pointed out earlier, come back up after it touches down. Which did not happen on the two previous landings. The, the mission elapsed time of touchdown unofficially, eight days, zero hours, four minutes, 49 seconds. This on videotape, a replay of the Space Shuttle Columbia's third mission return to Earth. A little bit different from the previous two landings in the uh, landing gear came down breathtakingly close to the time of the landing itself and uh, the nose bucked back up. For what reason, we don't know. Leo Krupp suggested and my guess with his experience as a test pilot, he was right, that okay, the Robert. nose bucked back up because it uh, okay, ran into some little gust of wind. Now, as you remember from previous landings, it will be uh, roughly a half hour before the crew emerges from the spacecraft. Uh, they have work to do inside, shutting down uh, all the systems. There's some safety precautions that have to be taken on the outside. And so it'll be, uh, oh, maybe 25 minutes from now, roughly a half hour after that uh, marvelous touchdown before we see the crew emerge. Now, with the Space Shuttle Columbia safely back home after mission number three, the question is, what was accomplished by all of this? Did the mission accomplish its objectives? What were the objection, objectives? Morton Dean is at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Mort? Dan, I guess there were some objectives accomplished and there were some objections. With me is Paul White. I suppose we can talk about the test, uh, the thermal test of the Columbia. It was uh, aimed uh, toward the sun and away from the sun, Paul, for long periods of time. And I assume they were pleased by the results. I suspect we don't really know the results yet, Mort, but we certainly are pre pleased with the opportunity to collect the data, which are very important from an engineering standpoint. And the uh, Shuttle Columbia flexed its robot arm and actually lifted a scientific experiment up out of the payload bay, and that was an important test, and that was indeed successful, Paul. Well, it was successful, uh, successful and exceedingly gratifying by the fact that we could, in fact, accomplish what we did without what we thought was a critical camera on the wrist of the arm. But NASA has to be concerned with uh, several things, the loss of some tiles, the loss of some communication, and the loss of some cameras. Yes, we're concerned, but that's why we have a flight test program worked on this vehicle as we do on uh, commercial airliners. There will be one more test flight, and that will take place, as is now scheduled in June, a seven-day flight, STS-4 it's called, maybe with a 4th of July landing. And the fifth flight will be the first operational flight, Paul, a very special mission. Yes, that's when we really move into the operational era, Mort, although we are not yet finished with, the, uh, with our gathering of test data, even when we fly STS-5 in subsequent flights. And on STS-5 will be two satellites, and uh, it will land back here for the first time at the Kennedy Space Center, and STS-6 will produce a new ship, 
in a new year, and it will be flown by my colleague here, Paul White. Stan? Thank you very much, Mortine and astronaut Paul White. Uh, in Florida, let's go back to White Sands, New Mexico, and uh, have a look. Terry Drinkwater. Well, here, while you've been visiting, uh, the procedures at the shuttle are exactly normal. The word from inside the craft is uh, everything is perfect. The men out there in the protective suits are checking for toxic gases and for anything else that, uh, that might be untoward. Uh, not, they found nothing. Uh, it's all quite routine now, and I guess you can call it a routine. Uh, this is, after all, the third time the shuttle has come back, Leo. Well, I don't... I think probably the big concern now is getting this bird out of here because the wind is kicking up again and we're picking up dust on the desert, on the lake bed here, and uh, we'd like to get this vehicle out of this hostile environment as quickly as we could before it gets completely contaminated uh, from this gypsum dust. And of course, that can't be for a while because the... Uh, 747 isn't here, and there will be several days. Exactly how many is not clear of servicing and processing of it here before it can be flown back to the Cape. I guess they'll have to cover it very tightly to try to keep this fine stuff from getting in its innards. If it's possible, I don't know whether it's possible to keep it clean out here. Well, Terry Drinkwater and, uh, excuse me, Terry and uh, Leo Krupp. Uh, if I may, Terry, Leo, briefly, what would you say was the biggest difficulty that developed on the flight in so far as we now know it well I think our major problems uh, Dan were the loss of tiles uh, and the landing conditions here uh, at White Sands posed some difficulty and uh, I think uh, another problem we're going to find out here in the next couple days is the effect of this hostile environment on the vehicle when it sets here before we can get it out of uh, off the lake bed and again briefly what would you say is the biggest accomplishment of this particular flight Oh, I think the, uh, the mission is extremely successful. As, as Paul was mentioning, uh, we obtained almost all of our test objectives, and we even got some extra ones. When you consider one of the objectives was the payload handling, and with the loss of the cameras, we were able to do these tasks, which we had never envisioned doing. It shows the, the capability to improvise in this program, and I think the, uh, the vehicle probably got 99% of its test objectives completed satisfactorily. Thank you very much, Terry Drinkwater and Leo Krupp at uh, the White Sands New Mexico landing site where the Space Shuttle Columbia is back safely again. And if it strikes you as it's getting to be routine, that's the whole idea. The idea of the Space Shuttle is to make space travel or on the front edge of being felt its routine. We'll have full coverage of the return of the Space Shuttle Columbia on this evening's CBS Evening News. Until that time, Dan Rather for the CBS Space Shuttle coverage team wishing you a good morning.